Gregor Jones from Panasonic. Awesome. Thank you, uh, Gary. My name is Gregor Jones. I'm uh, with Panasonic. Uh, we are a, a company that's over 100 years old. We've been building robotic cameras longer than anyone. Um, we're really excited to be here. I think, uh, you know, the education market and verticals are, um, uh, you know, just really important. Just talk to us about how these video service labs or broadcast media rooms are being used in education. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's kind of uh, something that has to fit into each uh, school. And, um, you know, uh, as far as the, you know, the solution goes, I think that, uh, you know, when you're choosing the the products that go in there, it needs to be able to scale out, it needs to be able to meet all the needs, but it also needs to be able to, um, you know, take care of uh, the, the people who are using it, right? It needs to be simple and, and easy to use. And, um, you know, uh, as far as... <clears throat> When you're uh, kind of thinking about the products and choosing them, uh, keeping things on the network is is better than not nowadays. Uh, getting you know people coming off the copper and getting on the IP and the IT, as you mentioned there, Gregor. I think this goes really well with what you were starting to talk about, which was Kairos and the level of cameras that you know and the uh, the integration that you guys do over IP with you know your cameras. So talk, tell us a about that, Gregor. How that would be used in this higher education scenarios we're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Like Paul said, a lot of this stuff has to do double duty. And, uh, you know, when you're talking about um, uh, putting on the production and having something that can, you know, control the cameras and, you know, um, op and control the screens and control, you know, all the stuff right there in one place, uh, the Keros is, a, is an absolute uh, excellent um, option for that. Uh, you know, and when you're talking about uh, control ability there's you know a lot of uh, one uh, for example our cameras you can control them up to five controllers at the same time uh, so you could have a professional controller with you know the real joystick you could have uh, something really simple like a what looks like a TV remote so any student or volunteer could actually you know operate the stuff you have a camera that's the UE 150 that is like for event spaces and you've got some cameras that are a little bit less expensive like let's say a, a, a 80 or a 40 why would you want one over over the other how would i make that decision if i'm trying to roll out better video for my video production and studio and sports and stuff as opposed to just getting distance learning in the classroom Sure, absolutely. Well, a lot of these cameras are doing both, right? And so I think, you know, when it comes to choosing a, a, a larger camera like a UE150 or something like an 80, a lot of it has to do with footprint. Um, you know, how big uh, can the camera be and the lensing and, um, you know, uh, as far as the ins and outs, I mean, there's a, a lot of similarities there, but there are, you know, all the spigots are on at the same time. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it really would be, you know, dealer's choice as far as uh, which which one they wanted to go with. Uh, uh, price is certainly a consideration. A lot of people don't even know that we actually have like a $1,000 uh, camera. We have the UE20 and the HE20, which are um, fantastic smaller cameras and, and compete really well. We're talking PTC cameras, but you guys also have some cool handheld cameras that are all NDI. And you can get a mix of having some PTZ cameras and still have a live camera that a camera operator is using to move around. So talk about why someone might want a live camera versus a PTZ camera versus an all robotic studio. Sure, absolutely. And so, uh, you know, the CX350 is the, the handheld camcorder, um, and it marries really well with the PTZs. A lot of people are using the UE150s as kind of their studio setups. And then you have the CX350, which you can put like a USB dongle on and go to a hotspot or... Uh, you know, your phone uh, for Wi-Fi, for a streaming, and then you could just take that, you know, remotely. Um, and so uh, it, it just, you know, kind of, it gives you scalability, right? And so also maybe one time a year you need four of those cameras, but you need to be able to operate them all from one place, right? So you could use like PTZ Control Center, which is a little bit of a misleading name because it, it includes the camcorders, uh, including the CX350, including the CX4000. Um, you can, you know, see all of your cameras in one place. You can, you know, uh, color them. You can kind of get into the menus options and, and control them. Um, so, uh, you know, just having the ability to uh, really have everything in one place and that one person can out and kind of manage it all together. And, that you know, it just makes it super easy to, uh, to take off of campus or bring back. What kind of cameras do you need in a, in a staged auditorium for a high school, a college? Where we're really talking about they're putting on, you know, a Broadway show, let's say. Two words, low light. You need something with a real sensor, something that can really get down there in low light. 
Um, and then another thing that I think Paul was kind of mentioning there, which is really kind of clever, is that um, you, you, if you have students who are going to be helping you and um, and operating the equipment, you 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 want them to be operating and helping on equipment that they're going to see out in the in the field. Um, so you know that that's always a good thing is just using cameras that that are um, being used out there. And to do instant replay, we need something very important out of our camera, and that's high frame rates. So Gregor, talk about the cameras for sports. Thinking about that you want to do those slow motion instant replays, you want to track the guy a little more carefully and from the standpoint of view of making it look, you can't be Fox Sports, but you can also look a lot better than the coach's camera that's sitting up, you know, in the, in the box that's just following the widescreen view of the game. Yeah, absolutely. And let's face it, the parents of those kids are your customers. That's <laughs> you right. Want them, you want them uh, excited. You want them seeing something great. Um, the UE160 actually does have a uh, high frame rate, uh, so you can have a robotic camera that uh, does uh, 120 frames. I just want to say thank you so much, uh, especially the people who are tuning in, uh, the people who are going to tune in later. I want to thank Video Guys. I want to thank Broadfield. Like You can't find a better uh, group of people to buy from than those. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I cover the Northeast, but there's someone just like me that covers every territory. Uh, there's someone that also covers projectors and displays and also covers audio. And, uh, you know, and if you need to demo equipment, if you need engineering support, if you need someone to come by and help you and, and kind of walk through the space and, and really visualize what your solution is, we're there. Um, and we're, you know, we're, we're more than willing to help. And, uh, again, I just, I really appreciate the time and, uh, everyone tuning in.